What's good YouTube? Today on XS Airsoft we're going to be doing another quick little tutorial. Um, it's been uh, like what, seven or eight days? I know I try to usually get videos out within a week, but I've been working on a lot of crazy different projects. Uh, so yeah, you guys will see what that's going to be. Um, oh, and uh, kind of this, another failed print, and this is what actually caused my main printer to fail. Anyway, besides the point, um, today we are going to be going over basically rusting on the ENL and how to remove it. Okay, so you guys will remember, I'm gonna go ahead and just take this magazine out because it's noisy as hell. So you guys will remember from my uh, ENL review video, basically ENLs are as close to real steel as it gets. For Airsoft, there is nothing closer to a real steel firearm than an ENL. It's just period, simple as that. And that's mainly because these are real steel firearms with Airsoft internals crammed inside. And I said that, I literally cannot reiterate that enough. That said, because of that, they like to rust. <laughs> now, an ENL has to be treated just like a real steel firearm. Now, take that with, you know, take it as a will, as, as you will. Uh, whether that's a plus or minus, it's really up to the, the beholder. You know, they, they always say beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Um, I personally like it. I still love this gun. The bluing on the steel is absolutely incredible. But what I did, and I did this intentionally, um, okay, so I had this out, I think it was a week ago now. I, I gave it a whole week, or a little over a week, to kind of ferment, so to speak. Um, I had this out at Commando, and I played with it most of the day. I got my sweaty hands all over this friggin' thing, and I let it sit. Oh yeah, not to mention that, like, you know, I get really sweaty. Uh, and I was touching on this thing, I had other people trying to play with this thing. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> Long story short, obviously it got full of sweat, grime, uh, just dirt and stuff from me having it out. I did scuff the stock, I'm really pissed off about that, so I gotta uh, use a, a varnish to seal that up, and you guys can see that there where I, I don't know, you probably can see that where I scuffed the stock, I'm really pissed off. But that was a pretty hard hit, but still. Um, yeah, so if you look really closely, and I'll throw some uh, overhead shots on here, uh, but if you look really closely, you can see the rust on the gun. That's a no-no, that's a no-go to me. So <laughs> obviously you wanna get rid of that. Okay, so right off the bat, there's a few things you're gonna need. Uh, I just got back from Walmart and I tie my bags up at Walmart because I don't like people thinking that I'm stealing, especially when I'm checking out back in another apartment, uh, not up by the register. All right, so right off the bat, what you're gonna need is some steel wool. Now, I, there's some people that say mixed things about using steel wool on a firearm or an airsoft gun for that matter. Realistically, they're wrong. You're not going to mess up the finish as long as you use a really fine uh, steel wool. Otherwise, if you have firearm cloths, those just take longer. Uh, the second thing you're going to want, you're going to need, is some WD-40 or some kind of a firearm cleaning kit. Uh, this is cheaper. It works every time. It's just why spend the extra money if you don't have to. Uh, you can't use this as a uh, rust preventative. It does prevent rust to an extent. You cannot use this as, a, as a, like a legitimate preventative though. You want to get an actual finish. And lastly, now this is completely optional. Uh, this here is steel bluing. Um, basically, this reseals the gun and prevents further rust. Uh, it's a rust preventative. And the reason I went with this, this is completely optional. I think this was $8. Uh, is because the ENLs come with a really nice blued steel finish. And I want to make sure that I don't get rid of any of that finish whatsoever. Uh, and this is really going to... I'll, after this video, I'll be able to tell you how well the bluing is on this rifle. Uh, again, this is basically a real steel Chinese AK. Uh, so good or bad, I guess we'll just have to find out. Alrighty. Now, uh, on to cleaning this bitch. Alright guys, now as much as the camera is having a hard time pick, actually picking up the rust spots, I mean this one I think is most prominent on camera uh, in video mode, but uh, and regardless, I'm still going to go ahead and do this because I'm still, I'm, I would be doing this anyways whether or not it was on camera, so I might as well record it. Uh, now this same technique can be used with any airsoft gun that you're getting rust spots on. Spot reduction rust, that's, that's what this is for. Alrighty, take your WD-40 right off the bat, and what, this is, what the WD-40 is going to do, let me widen this out a little bit. What the WD-40 is going to do is it's going to, ha going to go ahead and get underneath a lot of this rust that's on here. And it's going to lift it to the surface, which is what you want. Shake that up a little bit. Now I'm going to take my steel wool. And I'm just going to start lightly going over the surface. As you can see, 
see there, right off the bat, almost immediately, it just takes it right off of that. Does not require a whole lot of effort. Now one bad thing about using steel wool on an airsoft gun uh, is the steel particles as they flake off of the uh, main piece here, they're actually going to land and get magnetized basically by your motor and they're going to stick to your pistol grip. It doesn't hurt anyone, it just kind of looks funny. Now, as much as the camera is kind of having a hard time picking up what rust there is, what rust spots there is, honestly, the, the finishing so far actually held up pretty well. You can see exactly where my hand was on this rifle most of the time. Uh, but even then, the amount of rust that's on here is very minimal. I mean, typically, if you were to take out an all-steel airsoft gun that didn't have this boot finish or the first-gen ENLs, holy shit, this thing would be covered. You have to oil these rifles. Simple as that. If you go to like a big Milsim op, or had I brought this into the water, yes, the gun would function perfectly fine. But if I didn't re-grease it after bringing it into the lake like I did with the uh, PTS ACR, this gun would be toast. Simple as that, this thing would be toast. You'd have to be sanding and filing and all that other crazy shit to seal this bitch back up. You'd have to refinish the whole gun. Uh, but that's not this rifle, That is this is obviously the Gen 2s and the bluing on these receivers is much, much better. One other thing to note is you really don't want to overdo it. So if you don't have to continue, uh, continue like onto other areas, don't. There's no point to. Uh, the less less chafing we do to the finish here, the better. That did come right off, but I am going to go ahead and seal it with this. All right guys, so after just patting it down here and kind of taking off the excess, um, there is no, there's no rust, rust left. And the bluing on the steel is actually pretty spotless. I'm really actually impressed. Uh, she is completely cleaned up now. Um, there is, there's nothing. Yeah, honestly, I don't even think I'll have to use the, uh, the bluing that I bought because the bluing here is all intact. Yeah. I'm actually really impressed with this, and the WD-40 seems to be, it seems to have made a pretty nice little coat over the top of this. Uh, so I think we'll be fine just to leave it as it is. Uh, I'll revisit this later on, and I'll let you guys, in my next video maybe, I'll just let you guys know how it went and whether or not I had to retouch it up with some uh, bluing. But, uh, sorry, I'm just sealing this all. Give me a nice little coat, because it's not going to hurt the gun only going to help it. Alrighty, now because this gun, honestly, the camera, I'm surprised at how little the camera was able to pick up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring out a real steel Mosin and we're going to quick go over what this will do to that. Alright guys, so here's the Mosin. So right off the bat you can see how much more rusted uh, this is. Now this was left in a damp area. Uh, she was not properly put away when we moved. Uh, basically, my, one, of, one of my members of the family moved it to an area it shouldn't have been moved to, and I didn't know it was there, and this is what happens uh, when you don't properly store a firearm. Now, this is a... I still love this rifle, uh, but I'm, I'm actually, I just sold it anyway uh, to kind of pitch in to buy more printers. So, we're going to go ahead today, and we're going to clean her up. All right, so right off the bat, you want to unload it. She's unloaded, see that? She's unloaded, so we're good there. Check down the bore. All 
Alrighty. So she's nice and <laughs> she's good to be clean. She's not gonna kill anyone. Thank Lord. Thank the Lord. Alrighty, so I'm gonna grab the camera off the stand here just to give you guys a closer look. You can see all this this spotting here. That's all rust. This is all rust. Now, basically, what we're going to do is just what we did exactly to the ENL. We're going to go ahead and lift this right out of this gun. You can even see on the barrel here. This is what happens when you don't properly store a firearm, even on the trigger, trigger guard, all that fun stuff. I'm going to take a picture real fast because it'll pick it up a little better. Alrighty, now we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to give this a nice spray over. I'm just gonna start going ham, so stay tuned. That's a good example right there. You can see all that rust, spotted rust. But, uh, it comes off just as quickly as it can go on. You don't put these things away right. There that is. Alrighty. I'm going to quick hit the front section and then I'll get back to you. Alrighty, and we're back. So, uh, this is much better. <laughs> much, much, much better. The rust is virtually gone on this rifle. Uh, I'm gonna get some real close shots here. We're probably running over the screen now so you guys can really see it. But the rust is pretty much friggin' gone. But this was a much better example to use. I think the camera had a easier time picking this one up, uh, too. But this rifle is good to go. Alrighty, now there are obviously other methods to cleaning a firearm. Uh, now, with a firearm, what you really want to do <laughs> People are gonna ring me apart, so I'm just gonna say this to cover my ass. You have to get a firearm cleaning kit and do it with a firearm cleaning kit. No, you really don't. A WD-40 works just fine. Just make sure that you seal the finish after you're done. WD-40 is gonna lift the rust right out. It works. It just worked on screen, so don't bitch. <laughs> uh, yeah. Realistically, though, you do want to go in and clean the barrel, which I'm actually going to do. I'm gonna clean out the inner bar uh, the uh, uh, rifling in the barrel here. I'm not going to do that on camera, obviously, because this is not a firearm channel, this is an airsoft channel, uh, so I'm not going to do that on camera. But yes, so here she is. You guys can see how nice and clean that is. Now, that was maybe 10 minutes. Maybe 10 minutes at best. More like five. Uh, sorry, I'm looking at the camera to kind of make sure you guys are seeing this. But uh, yeah, basically, it worked out very well, even on the barrel here where it was just completely browning. Uh, <laughs> it worked out very well. Uh, the magwell, you guys can actually see the finish on the magwell again. There we go, I think that's a better shot. You guys can actually see the finish on the magwell again. Uh, the, the bolt there is like virtually spotless. Uh, I mean, for a rifle from World War One, this is actually pretty freaking well. God, I regret selling this already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's that. This is good to go. But yeah, so just like on the ENL, the WD-40 works really, really well with the steel wool and lifting everything right out. And here's the uh, paper toweling. You can see how nice and dirty this paper toweling is now. Uh, that is from the WD-40 as well as the rust. So there she is. Now, I'm not going to seal either one of these. Honestly, I think they're plenty fine. They're not going to be brought out on the field anytime soon. And I think it'll be a good testament to see how good the bluing is on that ENL. Um, if the buddy, if the guy I sold it to wants me to blue this, I will. But not right now <laughs> anyways so yeah here's the here is again the bluing that i bought so if you this include this i spent six dollars to clean these rifles and i have 
ample WD-40 left. I barely used any at all, and I have a full a whole pack of steel wool left that's still good to go. So there's, it's honestly a really cheap thing to do. Just do it. Uh, it's easier if you just seal your guns properly first and clean them up. You know, regrease them after you use them. Uh, ENLs, firearms, whatever it might be. Don't let rust, uh, you know, get on your gun in the first place, and your finish is going to last a lot longer because then you won't have to continually clean it and you know kind of tear it up again now this did not do much to that blue that, that finish it didn't hurt it really but over years of doing that obviously it's going to take a toll so it's just better if you just regrease your guns and never to worry about you can make these things last for centuries <laughs> literally uh so yeah there that is i guess you know i got nothing more to say there i'm gonna go ahead and post <clears throat> i'm gonna go ahead and post uh some I'm going to go ahead and post some uh, footage of the ENL up close and the Mosin Nagant up close so you guys can really see the difference between the two again. I'll do a side by side before and after so you can really see the difference. Uh, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys like to see these kind of tutorials, you know, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, give me a subscribe, a like, whatever, you know, comment away. Also, really, if you guys want to see me do more firearm stuff on this channel, and sorry, I'm sliding up and down here, it's because I'm not really sitting on anything. I'm trying to do a, a wall squat here, and it's just not working. <laughs> so again, if you guys really want to see me do more f stuff with real steel firearms, I will absolutely do that on this channel. I, I've been I've been wanting to do it for a while now. I, I am a firearm enthusiast as well as an airsoft enthusiast. You guys know that. Uh, the reason I own way more airsoft guns than real steel firearms, and I've gotten, I've gotten these shit comments before where people are like, Why don't you just buy real guns? <laughs> because I can't shoot my friends with a real gun. Well, of course you can, but I don't want to kill people. I'm not a dick. <laughs> I mean, I, I like the airsoft. I mean, I, they, they just call their hit, and it's not an issue, you know? Uh, people don't have to go to jail. People don't have to die and bleed. I don't want to see someone like... <laughs> anyway, way off track here. Point is... There's way more situations where I'm going to use my airsoft gun than where I'm going to use a real steel firearm. I don't need a, a triple barrel battleship real steel gun that shoots 50 BMG rounds. Why the fuck would I need that? What am I hunting? No, it's just this, you know, it's just for shits and giggles. So, I mean, I don't know. I still love firearms. I still purchase real steel firearms. They're fun to shoot, but I'm not going to go spending $40,000 on a real steel firearm when that same amount of money can buy me literally every single airsoft gun I'd ever want. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Again, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, new video coming out. I got my, my buddy got a Spartan Delta that's coming in tomorrow. So tomorrow I should be recording. I am going to pit that directly against a Spartan Delta. So we're going to see the, what the true difference is and whether or not the Spartan Delta series, the 1.5 generate the generation 1.5 ENLs is essentially what they are. Uh, how they stack up against the ENL. Now obviously. Just to throw this in there, I do have a Spartan Delta, but as many of you know, and I'll throw a shot of it now, a shot up of it now. But as many of you know, I've completely gutted this thing. It's got all new internals in it. It's built to look just like my real steel one, which is also all throw up there too. Uh, but yeah, so they're very. It's kind of hard to pit it because it's not really a stock Spartan Delta anymore. But anyway, it, the one he got too is also the stock Spartan Delta AK74. So it's the perfect one. It's a direct matchup for my ENL AK. So we'll see. We'll see. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you on that note. Um, I guess a quick update on the 3D printing. Uh, my printer was down for an extended period of time. I finally got it back up. That's what you've been hearing in the background this whole time. That It's going right now. <laughs> I got something printing, and hopefully that'll be not the next video, but the following video to go up should be something that you guys will absolutely adore. All right, guys, I think I've rambled enough. Like, subscribe, comment. I'm catcalling now. I'm catcalling. I, I think I'm supposed to catcall. I don't know why. Subscribers are like women. You tell them to subscribe and they don't. But if you don't tell them to subscribe, they want to subscribe. Why? Why are women like that? I mean, I get the subscriber thing. I don't like doing what people tell me to do. Unless it's like my boss. Okay, I'm way off topic. I love you guys. Bye. And I'll